Hello and welcome. My name is Mick with Camera Bits, and this is Photo Mechanic 101, a webinar to introduce you to Photo Mechanic if you're a new user, and also give you the chance to ask questions um, in this live Q&A. Uh, if you like, you would do that via the chat for the YouTube video uh, over on the right-hand side. Um, we are going to be doing a demonstration of some of the basic functionality of Photo Mechanic. And uh, I'm just going to talk about what it does, what its capabilities are, and then I'm going to do a demonstration of an ingest where I copy files from a memory card over to my computer, show you how I would rate them and cull them, and uh, how I would bring them into an external editor. All right, let me uh, keep an eye on the chat here in case I see any um, questions. But, uh, and also I should remind you that if this video, if I go too fast or if something uh, you miss something, this video will be available um, at the same URL after it's done. Uh, YouTube will archive it and you'll be able to access it and replay it at your convenience. All right, so this is Photo Mechanic here on my screen. What is Photo Mechanic? Well, Photo Mechanic is a uh, photo viewer. It's a metadata tool. It's a workflow engine. It's many, many different things to many, many different people. Um, but at its basic, um, it's, a, it's a way to view and manage digital photos. Uh, manage in terms of add metadata, rename files, move them around, rate them, uh, get them to where they need to go. Um, in some cases, uh, convert them or um, transmit them. Uh, really, anything you would do in terms of file management, you can pretty much use Photo Mechanic uh, to do that. Photo Mechanic is not a pixel editor. It's not meant to help you with color corrections or... Um, compositing or you know whatever creative um, things you do with your photos um, but we do try very very hard to interact very well with other pixel editing programs uh, a common use of photo mechanic is to use photo mechanic to cull a shoot of images before going into something like uh, adobe lightroom or photoshop or capture one or any other uh, post-processing workflow that you may already have uh, the reason you do that is because Photo Mechanic is very fast. Uh, Photo Mechanic is used for speed. It was initially developed for uh, photojournalists on the sidelines of huge sporting events who need to hit deadlines that are me measured in minutes. It's getting, the, getting their photos on the wire uh, before the end of the first quarter um, or things like that. So it's meant to be able to go through a large amount of raw images very quickly, uh, do what needs to be done with them in terms of managing uh, captions, keywords, file naming, and that sort of thing and then uh, getting them to where they need to be in terms of transmitting them to editors um, and things like that. But that speed that Photo Mechanic was built for can also be very helpful in many, many other areas of photography. Um, and that's what uh, we're here to demonstrate today. All right, I uh, see we have a few viewers here. Good uh, welcome here. I'm glad you could tune in. Um, as I said, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the chat, and I'll try and keep an eye on that. Um, but we are going to do, I'm just going to walk you through the basic interface here of Photo Mechanic. Uh, this is Photo Mechanic. This over here is the uh, navigator with a view of um, my, my computer. And up here is a, a favorites uh, pane as well. If there's a, a, a folder that I use in my computer that I go to off a lot, I can always just grab it from here and drag it up into favorites. So. Um, this area in the middle here, we call a contact sheet. Uh, a contact sheet is just a view of a folder on my computer. It's not that these images are brought into Photo Mechanic per se. Uh, they just exist in a folder here in my uh, demo folder. I have the Charmy Pena Images folder, and that's what we see here. This is just this folder, and these are the images that are in this folder. Uh, Charmy's a friend of Camerabits. She's one of our Camerabits ambassadors, and she was gracious enough to allow me to use some of these photos in a demo. So thank you to Charmy. So this is the contact sheet showing thumbnails of all the images that are in the folder. Uh, you can come up here and change the size of the thumbnail if you need to with this. Uh, you can change the sort order. It defaults to file name, but you can sort by uh, any sort of other type of uh, file information that you might think of. Uh, you can reverse that sort with this checkbox here. And then this Dropbox shows you um, whether you're viewing all images selected, tagged, or untagged. Um, so as you can see here, a tag 
is just this check mark on an image. So if I were to view selected, or excuse me, view tagged, pardon me there, um, you would see only the images with the checked, and you can go back to all. And then over here are the ratings widgets. Um, these images have all been rated with color classes and star ratings, um, indicating you know various levels of whether or what you might need them for. And you can now use these filters to um, hide those things. So if I, just, if I say, oh, I only want to see the four stars and above, I can deselect those and go down to here. Or let's uh, turn these back on. Or say maybe I've tagged all my green images to be transmitted to a client. I can come here and only show the green images and maybe do things with those. One tip with these widgets, um, normally you would click on something to deselect it, turn off red, turn on red. Um, but if you hold down the modifier key, now this is the option key on a Mac, uh, and it's an alt key on a Windows machine. If you option click one of these, it hides all the others. So if I option click green, automatically just goes to the green. Option click again, restores everything else. So that's a time saving tip. Um, as if you're new to photo mechanic, the photo mechanics uh, reason for being is to save time. And we try our very hardest to combine many multiple steps into single steps uh, whenever possible. So um, learning photo mechanic, involves combining steps. It involves uh, mastering keyboard shortcuts as well. A lot of times keyboard shortcuts are much faster than having to reach for the mouse and click something. Um, so if you uh, if you want to become a very uh, quick photo mechanic expert, I would encourage you to learn um, the, the keyboard shortcuts. If you come up here to the menu, you'll see that the keyboard shortcuts are always listed down to the side here so that um, maybe it's the first time you use it, you might go to the menu, but after that, you, when you learn how to use these keyboard shortcuts, you might use those. I would recommend that. So let's uh, say we wanna take a deeper look at one of these images, uh, double click it, and it opens up what we call the preview window. This is a full view of the, uh, the file here. Um, there's some EXIF data, or other metadata already associated with the image here. Um, I can zoom in to an image just by uh, pressing the Z key and then controlling the zoom level here. So I can zoom in and out if I'm looking for a specific focus area. I can do that this by clicking and dragging. Um, that's The controls for this are over here. There's, this pane is the zoom pane. Um, there's also a cropping pane. Uh, I said Photo Mechanic doesn't do pixel editing, and that is true, but you can do a crop, a meta, what we call a metadata or soft crop, where if you add a cropping area, this will add the cropping information to the metadata. It does not actually edit the file itself. And when you drag this into your post-processing, uh, like Lightroom, then you should be able to see this crop in Lightroom ready to go. And you can preview that uh, either by clicking the preview image here, preview icon, or just with a P key. The P key will preview your crop. I can turn that off here, and then you can we'll, we'll clear that crop out of there because this is a nice image. This has already been processed by Charmy. She does a great job. And then down here, we also have a histogram. Um, you can turn this on or off to, uh, well, you show the histogram, and then you can also choose to show blown highlights or lost shadow detail here. Uh, this is a well-exposed image, so we're not gonna see any of that here. But if you're looking at an image and it maybe looks a little dark and you wanna know if you can recover it because it's a raw image, uh, if you highlight show shadow detail, as long as you don't see any of the shadow details highlighted, you know you'll be able to pull that back out. So that's why we have this in there. It's really helpful to evaluate an image before you take it on to the next step of your workflow. All right, and yes, you can, uh, so then once you're in the, um, preview window, just using the arrow keys, you can scroll through all the different images of your, uh, that are in your contact sheet. Um, in fact, here we have this uh, gadget up here that shows the thumbnails. You can either have the thumbnails on the side uh, or on the bottom. Um, you can also choose to view photos uh, side by side, which is can be helpful, especially if you're working with bursts and you wanna pick the one, um, best image in a burst, you might do this um, so that you can like pick one and then look for alternate candidates that way. Um, you can also do things, you can delete the image from here by clicking on it, you can uh, copy it, you can from here send it to your post-processing, which we'll get into a little bit more later on. Um, we can open up the metadata uh, information, the full metadata, IPTC metadata information, uh, and we'll do that in a little bit as well. Um, and also you can do a soft rotation. 
if you if you shot something um, where you rotated your camera and for some reason your camera didn't auto rotate that you can do a soft rotation which again doesn't change the image at, at all it just puts that information into the metadata and then these Im over here just um, to be able to maximize this um, and that way if you just want to center on the image itself you can do that in fact and here's a good example of uh, some of the down here you'll see these little um, blue uh, highlights that just shows the lost shadow detail which you would expect in this uh, contrajour backlit image um, so that's that's a creative decision so that's not a big deal but I just wanted to show you what those actually look like let's turn those off and then those goes away so then uh, you can click out of this either clicking the uh, the close or using the escape key is always the fastest I'm uh, my muscle memory is developed, so I'm always just using the escape key. And yeah, so these images, as I say, just exist in this folder. They're not uh, in a, any specific database for photo mechanic only. So if I delete an image from this uh, contact sheet, uh, it will delete from my hard drive. So be aware of that. And also from here, you can drag these into different folders. If I needed to move this into a different folder, um, if I had a subfolder here for unrated and I needed to, some for some reason, um, drag these into that folder, I can just click and drag them into a folder. Um, if I need to drag these to my desktop, I can also do that. If, I have, if I'm just working with a desktop and I need to move my pictures to somewhere like that, I can drag them out of Photo Mechanic. And this will, uh, it acts very much like the uh, File Explorer window in Windows or a, a Finder window in, um, on a Mac. Um, you can anything you can do in terms of dragging and dropping. You can double click on something to to rename the file um, if that's uh, what you need to do. You can do that. So what we're going to do now, as I said, a lot of people use Photo Mechanic to go through their images right after a shoot to call them to find their keepers to get rid of their rejects and um, sort of make sure the next step in their process, whether that's dragging into the a Lightroom catalog or whatever. Will obviously go a little bit faster if you're not working with your full take. If you don't have to deal with all your rejects, um, so we'll. Uh, I'm going to do a demonstration of that. I have some sample images from a wedding shot by another friend of Camera Bits, uh, Kim Smith Miller, allowed us to use some images from a, a wedding that she shot, and we'll be uh, copying those from a memory card to our hard drive. We're going to go through a quick rating and culling process, and then I'll show you how I would take those into Photoshop for further editing. All right, a, a comment here. First of all, I want to say that um, when you when you have images on a memory card, it's very important to copy those images to your hard drive before you start adding metadata to them. Uh, it's very common that I hear from folks that they uh, start trying to add color classes or ratings to images while they are still on the memory card. Uh, this is certainly possible in Photo Mechanic, and we, we let you do that in a pinch if it's an emergency. Um, but know that every time you add metadata to an image with Photo Mechanic, you're actually creating sidecar files or changing the file size. And when you do that on a memory card, uh, that's a little bit risky. You could risk um, corrupting your card or filling up the card, and then you might see um, your computer might start throwing error messages at you because you're trying to add data to a full card. Uh, and that's not helpful. So we strongly recommend that the first step in your workflow would be to copy all the images to your to your hard drive, or not even all the images. You can copy some of them as well. There's different ways to do that in Photo Mechanic. But we are going to um, we're going to do a, an ingest of a card. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about Photo Mechanic's preferences, and I want to show you a few preferences um, that will make your calling a little bit faster. I'm going to open the Photo Mechanic Preferences window now. Uh, you can certainly do this up in uh, the menu, but I'm just going to use Command Comma on my Mac. It would be Control Comma on a PC, and it's going to open up the Preferences window. There are a lot of preferences in Photo Mechanic. There are all these different sections of preferences over here um, to be able to control how Photo Mechanic behaves and how it will integrate with the other things in your workflow. Uh, but I'm just going to go through a couple here in this demo just to show you uh, a few things that I like to, how I like to set up Photo Mechanic to make my calling faster. Uh, first of all, in the preferences for the um, contact sheet, or no, the excuse me, for the preview window, I'm going to click down here, and here is a setting. Um, these are all the settings related to the preview window, but here is the setting automatically advance to the next photo when any of these things are changed. Um, there are three main ways to sort of identify or pick photos in Photo Mechanic, and that's either by tagging them, adding a color class, or adding a rating. Um, and when you change one of those, if you're looking in the preview window and you add a tag, a color class, or rating, Photo Mechanic will automatically advance to the next photo. So in, 
you don't have to rate an image, then click next to get to the next image. You just will add the color class or rating or tag and it will automatically move to the next one. This saves you a click and will make you faster. And then down in the accessibility preferences this is another one I want to highlight here, um, the single key shortcuts. Um, the single key shortcuts allow you to add color class or star rating just by pressing a sim single number key. Um, but we let you choose which, are, which of these shortcuts operates um, for you, whether you want it to set the color class or the rating. Uh, I prefer the rating. I do When I do my coloring, I use star ratings. Um, so that's what I have it set for. Um, but if you want those to set color classes, um, you can do that as well. It's certainly You're certainly able to add either one at any time using uh, either the full keyboard shortcut, which involves like a command key or a control key, or you can even just click on the widget in the in the image itself at any time to add colors or star ratings. But if you're doing it quickly with a sh single key shortcut, like I'm going to demonstrate, uh, that will be faster for you. So we'll close that out. So I've got a memory card in my card reader now, and uh, I'm going to open up the ingest dialog, which will have all the options that will control how I copy those images to my hard drive. Um, this is the key for this. You can have photo mechanics set up to pop this up every time you pop in a memory card, um, but I just did command G to get to the ingest uh, would be control G on a PC. And here we go. Here's the memory card and here's a lot of different options. Uh, the first thing you'll want to do is set your root folder for where you're ingesting these images or copying them to. Um, you can set them here. I'm going to put these actually in my demo folder. So we'll do that here. This is my demo folder. Open that. Let's go into the demo. Uh, we're going to copy locked and unlocked photos. Uh, this is used sometimes if you have a high priority image, you're uh, an event photographer and you need something that you need to hit to the wire very quickly or um, something you need to deliver maybe faster than anything else. If you lock that image in camera and you set photo mechanic to copy the locked photo only, it will only ingest the locked photo so you can get to that and uh, get it processed and, and off to the wire quickly. Um, so that's what that's all about. And then if you shoot RAW plus JPEG, if you want to maybe only work with the RAWs or only work with the JPEGs, you can do that here as well. Um, here's, this is very important, the apply metadata to photos. In fact, I'm going to use open up this metadata template here in a second. Uh, metadata, if you're not familiar with it, is just information about the photo. Um, metadata includes things like the file name, but it also includes things like keywords, um, captions, uh, the, the ratings, the color classes, those are that's all metadata. Um, the IPTC, which is an international standards board um, that started with photojournalists, has defined many, many, many different metadata fields, whether it's who appears in the photo, um, model clearances, uh, locations, GPS data, um, editing status. And when I open up this metadata template, you're going to see a lot of different options. Uh, don't be alarmed by how much data is available to you. You can use this uh, as much or as little as you need, um, but we're gonna. I'm just going to show you some of the basics here that uh, you might want to use to speed up your workflow. So we'll open up this. So here's my metadata template. Um, I have some things in here. I, I would normally tag these images with my credit, uh, my copyright information, and I might uh, add to some things here. Um, you can also like I said, put in an event, um, other things in here. And you can also, it's also possible to customize the screen to hide any of these fields that you don't need. So um, if you need to do that, it's that's possible in Photo Mechanic as well. Uh, but one thing I want to highlight down here is this little uh, lightning bolt icon or what we call the snapshot icon. And this, what the snapshot icon is, this is something, uh, if you want to be an expert at Photo Mechanic, uh, get used to using this snapshot icon. When You'll see this in many different uh, dialogue windows in Photo Mechanic. And it, what that will do will save all the choices you've made in that dialogue to a preset that you can use later. For example, I'm, I've saved a preset for Kim Smith Miller's images. See, I've, I've created all these presets here. I've created one for Kim Smith Miller, and I'll select that. And it has now filled in all these different things. Here's information about uh, the wedding that she shot. Here's her credit and copyright information. Uh, her name, her, uh, and there's a, a basic caption that she's going to have in there. So if she has, if she's sending these off to a, a client or these, they appear somewhere else, she'll have this uh, caption in there. Um, there's some keywords that will help her search for these things later on. So we're going to, this metadata is going to apply to these images during the ingest. So while I'm copying the images from the memory card to my computer, this image, this information is all going to be tagged during the ingest process. So it's going to combine the steps of applying this 
um, and copying in the same step. As I said, photo mechanic is always trying to combine, allow you to combine different steps into one step to save you time. So we'll close that here. Back to the ingest dialog. Um, within this um, uh, destination, the, the sort of the root folder, you can now um, really fine tune this. If you want to ingest this into a folder with a specific name, or I often choose um, directly into a dated folder, then a folder with a name, and you'll see the preview here of where these images are going to go. Uh, and then in fact, again, there's also presets here, and I've created one for this ingest. We're going to actually create a dated folder, and then this is going to be the actual folder name. Um, and then you can choose to rename the photos here. We won't get into that, but that's possible if you want to, say, put your name in there or something. Um, or rename them. Um, this is also going to happen during the ingest step, so you don't have to ingest the files and then in a separate step rename them. You can do that here. And then you can also uh, choose to... Um, I like to check unmarked, unmount the source disk after the ingest. That's the way I can pop it out. You can choose to erase the source disk. I would never do that because the as, uh, as of right now, these images only exist on my memory card, and uh, that's sort of the ultimate backup. And one other thing I want to show you in the ingest dialog is this incremental ingest checkbox. This is an important one and very helpful for a lot of um, photographers. This means that if you check this on your first ingest and you ingest um, all the images on the card and you pop it out and pop it back into your card, into your camera, excuse me, and go shoot, maybe you just ingested the first quarter and you're back to shoot, it, shoot the second quarter of the, the game or whatever, or shoot the next aspect of the wedding or whatever you're shooting and you pop the card back in as long as you have incremental ingest checked it will only copy the new photos that exist on the card um, so that's one option here that you would want to pay attention to i'm going to not check this because i've done this demo a number of times so if i had this checked it would see that i have ingested these uh, images in a previous demo and it would not ingest any of them so i'm going to have this unchecked um, but if i was doing this for my personal use i would probably always have this checked all right, with that um, in order, we're gonna select the card here and we're going to start ingesting these photos. And as you can see, here's the uh, the status down here in the in the task window. And this has created a folder. Remember we said it was uh, creating a folder right here. This has been now created in my demo folder. Um, I didn't have to create, I didn't have to create this folder specifically. The photo mechanic created those folders for me just because of the options in the ingest window. <coughs> And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, again, we're, this is a, a, these are two steps saved that I would have normally had to do on my own, but Photo Mechanic automated those for me. And uh, these are giving common here. Now these are, these are photos shot with a Nikon camera, a Nikon D70. Uh, they're raw photos, but Photo Mechanic uses the embedded JPEG in the raw file to be able to um, show things very quickly. Because Photo Mechanic doesn't have to prepare the raw file for rendering, um, it's able to do things uh, much quicker. So for this call, I'm going to open up the first one now you'll remember I have the single key shortcut set to set my star ratings and I can just have my fingers on the star on my number keys and I can just start going through here. Now this image is a little dark, but if I go to my histogram, I see that um, so there's no shadow detail lost or maybe a little bit here in the corner. So this image will probably clean up very nicely in a raw processor. So this is uh, while it looks dark, this histogram and um, tool here allowed me to realize that this is salvageable in post. So I'm gonna keep that. Maybe I'll give that a two stars. I click the two key or just tap the two key. It adds, you'll see down here, it's added the two star and it automatically moved to the next image. Um, so my calling process then becomes just going through these images with my fingers on the numbers key and my, I have my thumb on the arrow keys because if I need to go back for some reason, I can just click the back arrow and do that. Um, and, and I just want to show real quickly, if I just hold down the arrow key, you'll see how fast Photo Mechanical can go through all these images. This is how fast um, looking at all these raw files. This is sort of one of the big reasons why people use Photo Mechanic, is to be able to go through this shoot of raw files this quickly um, and then do that step before dragging them into uh, Lightroom. So um, maybe I'll give this a, a one star. Oh, that's a little better. That's a two star. There we go. And then I'll just start making my, my judgments on these images as I want to rate these. That's a three. That's a, maybe that's weird to have him. That's that's a one. That's a one. Oh, that's a good fan. That's three. And you go through and make your judgments however you want to do it. Oh, these are a little motion blurred. I don't want that. So I'll just hit these all with one stars. Oh, that's a good one with that fellow. And so you go. Oh, there's some, some good. Oh, there's some dancing images. Maybe I like... Uh, 
That one's maybe a little bit funny. I might use that as an accent image. Maybe I'll give that a three stars. That's nothing there. So I'm looking at these images and I'm like, oh, here's a, here's a little, some images from them from below. Maybe I like uh, to decide, oh, do I want, um, uh, which one of these I want? Maybe I'll go to the side by side and I'll start looking at these and say, oh, maybe I like, um, that's the one I like, or no, I like this one. Go back and forth and make all your, just um, make your judgments that way. I'm gonna give that uh, four stars because I like that the most. And then we'll go back into the single thing and move on. Go through here and, you know, you can do this. And a lot of wedding photographers specifically have told me that they, Photo Mechanic gives them their, their weekends back because this culling process, this evaluating the photos and, and picking the rejects and picking the winners or the keepers um, could take, you know, six to eight hours, depending on how, how much they shot. Um, using Photo Mechanic, they might get it down to an hour or two. Um, it's, uh, really, it's really the sort of the, the, the secret sauce of photo mechanic. We not only use the JPEG preview, but we do a lot of things with pre-caching and looking ahead, um, kind of seeing where the direction of you're looking at with your, where your photos, if you're going up or down and, and preloading them. And just, we really want it to be as fast as possible. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a, that's a four star. And so, okay, great. Now I'm in here and I want to, uh, say I've, wanted to now add a color class to this. I can certainly do that. Just come down here and click and say, maybe I want to make that a blue because that's uh, maybe a possible color, cover image. Come here, um, you know, this, or or maybe I want to change this. I said, oh, you know what? I do want to make this a, a, a two star. Come in here and just click the widget. You can do that um, and then you can tag here. Um, all these, you can make all these things whenever you want. Just the uh, the single key was uh, set up so that I would do this quickly during my culling process. And now I want to say, okay, get rid of all the, the zero and one stars and show me these might be my keepers. There we go, two stars or three stars and above um, here. And now I might take these into, um, I'm going to take them into Photoshop. Uh, there's a few different ways to do that. You can do this one at a time. So if you're looking at an image and I say, I want to open this in Photoshop, um, if I just hit the E key, it's going to use my default editor, um, which I set up, and it's going to call, it's going to oh, start, here's Photoshop opening up here. This is a raw file, so it should open up in camera raw. And there we go. That's, um, we can go that way. Let's uh, cancel that out. Thank you very much. We'll look at you later. Or if I need to, if I want to do the whole group, I can either highlight them all and just, I can just drag them right to the Photoshop icon. Um, and the same thing is going to happen. These are now all opening up in camera raw down here. I can go through in camera raw, do my edits. Um, we'll cancel out of them. Or if you hit these and you want to just do with the keyboard shortcut, if I do a command E, it's going to do the exact same thing. Um, and it's going to ask me, do I really want to edit all these? Uh, yes, I do. And the same thing happens again. These all open up uh, very quickly in Photoshop. And you can set this up to work with uh, Lightroom um, or Capture One, whatever. Um, you can set in the preferences what your default editors are. So that's uh, that. That's it. That's how I would take them into the um, post-processing part of my workflow. Uh, after they come back, I might save some JPEGs out here, and then maybe I need to send these off to uh, an editor, or I want want to send them off to a client, or I might want to send them to my um, uh, my online gallery. There's the uploader tool, which we'll go over here. Um, I can select images. The uploader tool will open here in just a second. And I can pick, we have presets here for all sorts of different things. If you have an Amazon S3 account, you can send images there. Um, Flickr, which I use personally, I like that a lot. Um, but we also have um, things for Photo Shelter or Smug Mug. Um, you can post to Twitter using Photo Mechanic. And then in this upload dialog, there's some things I wanted to point out here as well. Um, you can um, make copies of the images and resize them during the file transfer. So say, for example, you shot a concert and your um, the website you're working with says, I need images that are 1400 pixels on the long side. You can come down here to the, say, save as JPEG to fit box, put this 1400. And then when I send these off to, maybe this will probably be an FTP um, job if I'm doing this FTP, so let's do this again, save as JPEG. To fit box, 1400, and they might say, and we need those images tagged with, you know, the, the your name and uh, the the date or something. You can change the rename. What Photo Mechanic will do will be create these JPEGs on the fly, resized, renamed, and then you don't have to save a copy of them. Um, this one has saved me a lot of time as well. Um, I used to save all these different copies for different outlets, 
uh, they would all be different, named differently, um, and it would gum up my hard drive. Then I, when I went to search for images, I would I would find the smaller version, and I couldn't find the larger version. It was it was just a mess. Photomechanic takes that kind of step out of the out of the process. It, it combines the resize, the rename, all into the transfer. So you can do that in one step, and you don't have to save those images. You can if you want to. You can save a copy if you want to, um, but I wouldn't. And then you can send those that way. So that's another example of uh, using Photo Mechanic. All right. Uh, how? Let's. I'm checking the um, the chat in the video here. Oh, hey, uh, Jeff Vogan, Sport Dad. Um, he's a, a incredibly fast photographer and processor of images. He's a Camera Bits ambassador. Uh, great to see Sport Dad here. Uh, Nick, I've seen you in these as well, so good to see you. Um, and then we have a question, how to put the taskbar in the sidebar? Oh, that's a, that's a, this is a, a Mac OS thing. I believe, I can't remember how to do this, but I think I right. Oh yes, yeah, so if I just come down here and I right click on it, I can position on screen, left, bottom, or right. That's a, a Mac OS thing. That has uh, nothing to do with photo mechanic, but that's how I do that. I like it on the left. Um, I can put it a lot of the defaults to the bottom. I just like it on the left because I like more vertical. I don't always use the, the horizontal area. Uh, hopefully that happens. Let's see, Tracy says, I'm interested in trying to do my keywording in PM. However, if I later decide that I don't like it, is there an easy way to remove all keywords on export? Yes, there is, in fact. Um, and I'll show you, first of all, just the basic removing of keywords. So let's take a look at this image. I'm going to click the I key here and it's going to open up the metadata info for this one image. And we can see here's the the metadata that I had tagged in the um, in the uh, the ingest step that's here. But if I now were say I wanted to remove the keywords from all these images, I'll select them all. Um, I, I can do a multi select where I click on the first hold down shift and click the last or I can just do command A to select all which is probably the fastest. And I'm now going to do Command I, and this is going to open the metadata template. Uh, the metadata template is very similar to the the metadata info panel, but it the template is used when you want to do things to multiple different images. So I have some images in here, um, but say I wanted to remove all the uh, first of all, I might clear this, and I can just check this box. And I'm going to apply this to the keywords. Leave this empty, and I'm going to apply this to all the images. And now if I open up this image, um, let's hit the I key for this one again, you'll see the keywords field is empty. So that's here, that's gone. Um, that's how you would just, that's the basic removal of a keyword um, field. If you wanted to do the on transfer, um, let's go back to the uploader screen. I'm gonna send this to someone. Um, here you can do that as well. You can apply the metadata IPT template, call this up and then do the exact same thing here, and it will apply whatever you put in this metadata template, it will be applied to the image that you transfer. So if say you wanna remove the keywords only on the images you're sending off to a client, but see, save them on your own, you can certainly do this, just create this, or maybe they want you to clear all the metadata. So you can check all these boxes that will clear all the metadata, all the, just for the transferred images, but keep the metadata in your own. Uh, yeah, that's a, very good, that's a very good question. It's a very, very useful thing, so thanks for asking that one. All right, uh, and that's basically it. That's, a, that's the basic use of photo mechanic. Um, like I said, there's a lot of other things you can do. There's complex ways to use photo mechanic to rename files. Um, you can use uh, different insert different parts of the metadata into file name. It, it's really, really very powerful. And, and it takes, it can certainly take a while to learn as with any uh, complex program. Um, but this is where I would start. Um, and I would recommend say, Mastering these basics is especially using keyboard shortcuts. Um, at my muscle memory to like to open preferences again, command comma, very quick. Um, if I need to open up the metadata, hit the uh, I key while it's selected. Things like that, command I to open up the template. Um, those are those are some of the, the bigger ones that will that will save you time. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Let me check the uh, chat to see if there are any other questions. Oh, let's see. I missed one from David. Uh, will stars that I assign in Capture One survive when I send selected raw files back to PM? This is a great question. Um, Capture One deals with some, some raw files a little bit um, strangely. It will uh, never touch the raw file. It will um, create a... Um, it will update, the I believe, the XMP sidecar. And forgive me, I don't, I'm not a, a Capture One expert. Um, but if if you have Capture One setting ratings and you make sure that 
Capture One doesn't just simply add the rating to its own database, but it updates the file itself, then it will see those, Photo Mechanic will see those ratings. The exact same thing with uh, Lightroom. If I rate an image, say four stars in Lightroom, there's a command in Lightroom that says update the metadata of the actual file. I would do that update. And then as long as the metadata is either in the file or in the sidecar for the file, uh, Photo Mechanic will see that. These, these ratings and color classes are meant to be um, portable from different application to different application. So that's, uh, so it should work, but that would depend if you're going from Capture One back into Photo Mechanic, that would depend on getting Capture One to update the metadata in the actual file. I believe, I believe Capture One just defaults to just putting that information in its own database. So you might have to figure out how to do that. Um, so that's probably not as helpful as you need, but hopefully it puts you on the right track. All right. Um, I think that's it. I don't see any other questions. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If you, uh, if there's questions you um, missed, like I said, you can rewatch this video just by coming to the same URL as soon as this ends. Uh, it'll probably take a few minutes to process, but then you can rewatch this particular demo. Um, but you can also contact our support team. Um, if you go to camerabits.com and click on the contact uh, link, um, our customer support team is uh, very responsive. We try to respond to email inquiries, inquiries within uh, one business day, um, but you can give us a call. Um, we offer free technical support over the phone to all users of Photo Mechanic, and that includes free trial users. If you're using Photo Mechanic on a free 30-day trial and uh, have questions about what it can do, certainly give us a call. We're, we're happy to offer support for that as well. Um, the, the tech support is free. Um, it's it's uh, you might have to pay for long distance depending on how you do that, but there's no charge for the tech support and we have human beings answering the phones uh, during business hours. We're on the west coast of the United States. Uh, we're in Oregon. Uh, so you will you may have to do some adjustment of the time zones, but we do have people here. So give us a call. We're, we're happy to talk to you and even just give you advice as to uh, how to solve different problems that you may be having with your workflow. All right. Thank you very much again for watching. Um, my name is Mick. Uh, we'll, I'll be back here doing this demo, probably pretty much the same demo in about two weeks. Um, so if you, if you want to come back and ask more questions, but um, don't wait, certainly contact our contact team. And uh, you can also check out our documentation site. That's docs, D-O-C-S, docs.camerabits.com. has a lot of tutorials and helpful articles and documentation about uh, many of the other features. So hopefully that will help you. And with that, I will wish you a good day. Happy photographing. And uh, yeah, take care.